nearing Colombo, grandest city of Ceylon. The elegant town hall around revolves the official life of Colombo. Goldface Hotel, a famous hostelry where traders bargain for the wealth of Ceylon and where a modern swimming pool indicates the luxuries provided for guests who gather here from all over the earth. More priceless than panoplied elephants and gold mines is the far-famed Ceylon tea. Tropical estates bear forests of tea trees near Nuralia, where steeped to goodness in a showering sunlight, their Tamil girls pick the precious cup. After the field workers have obtained an accounting, their output is boxed and forwarded to a storage warehouse where the bony estates are repacked in smaller lead-lined packages. An immense warehouse on Slave Island in Bayra Lake is a converting plant for a wide area. Most of its output goes to London. An ox cart goes to town. With the exquisite indifference of the Far East, old and new methods contrast in the fabulous tea industry. Ancient glory of the Tamil race reposes in the city of Kandy. The Tamils lost their power to the British in 1812. The Temple of the Tooth, guarded by the replica of sacred elephants. The temple is one of the show places of Kandy. Nearby is the public library that once was the throne room and glamorous court of the Kandia kings. On the balcony of the library, a Buddhist priest meditates in prayer. Patacado, the most romantic region of Ceylon, with bamboo homes of the jewel diggers who search out treasures that have been hidden in the earth for centuries. Priceless gems that are the objects of keen superstition and of gambling for high stakes. In wet gravel beds that must be drained before mining, underground rivulets running through the ages have rolled and polished a million pebbles to form Ceylon's precious stones. On a day fixed by astrology, material is hoisted to the surface in baskets and what at first appears to be just muck is washed by hand until all the clay is gone. Gods stand by watching every move to see that none of the hall is pilfered and that the newly mined stones are properly prepared for the important millwork to follow. An uncut stone reveals little of the slumbering fire in its heart. But when an expert saws the same stone, he fashions the sharp prisms that truly reflect the gorgeous radiance that delights the jewel pit's owner. Native Ceylonese, in the famous Alwis plant, shaping a rough blue sapphire stone with an old bowstring grinder in order to radiate its elegant luster and color. The final polishing operation must give lasting brilliance to attract the eyes of the jewel traders who come from many lands and to fascinate the ultimate purchasers. Mine owner de Alwis displays gems to Punchi Singho, a wealthy trader who exalts at $60,000 in rare merchandise, including the star sapphire with penetrating light points and bluish depth. The cat's eye that resembles an opening and closing eye when moved around. Aquamarine, like the depths of the sea. A yellow sapphire shining in the light. The undying jewel, 1,000 years old, has been part of many lives. 
Jim Sao Hao live for generations with unfailing beauty. Away back when man was only a treasure in the heart of his god, the rugged mountains of Veda became a background for the most mysterious people in all the races of man. An expedition leaving Kokunarva to photograph the Vedas. Along the jungle trek is discovered a cool water hole where a herd of water buffaloes gather. An impromptu hunt to provide buffalo meat for the safari of the camera hunters and their long line of native carriers. Advised by drums of the approaching expedition, the Vedas, often conjectured as one of the lost tribes of civilization, come forth to greet the visitors. The Ceylonese organ of the jungle introduces the tribe to civilization, an unusual formality that calls for excited tribal palaver. Young Veda with the eyes of an eagle, and wilderness women with face and physique rivaling their sisters of civilization. Patiently waiting to see the wonders in the bags of tricks brought to the world. Preparing to hand out goodwill gifts, a most important preliminary in the wild. are a mystery because unlike most jungle and unlike white men, they have no regard for money and highly prize simple trinkets. Both men and women have straight hair and while they live in huts and hunt their food, many are actually handsome and display both energy and intelligence in primitive feed on game and wild honey and mothers carry their young on their backs. With childlike pleasure they regard the gifts. To them, even a small mirror is a man-made wonder surpassing the marvels of nature. Home life of the Vedas is simple. Children are born as naturally as fruit on the tree. There are no gas or electric bills and no installments to pay on the car or radio. Solve their housing problems with nests in trees resembling wires. Thousands of black ants all live in one of these nests. A better war rumba of more determination than grace. With that ant's nest close by, the Terpsichorean gentlemen would seem to be in danger of ants in their pants, if they had any pants. The trek back to Colombo. Homeward bound through deep forest and sparkling stream with stirring memories of bewildering Ceylon, an island of untold riches and ancient kings of scenic charm and a lost tribe of bronzed Apollos who fight with wild beasts for control of the jungle. <laughs> <laughs>